the Vivet 76 with my Steyr M95 long rifle. These are kind of a rare breed because most of them were cut down to carbine length. It took me a while to find this one. I started in the Milser collecting with the most and the Gaunt, and then I started with the M95. This is the rifle that got me into reloading. These were made in Steyr, which was in Austria, I believe. You can double check that. Germany or Austria, I believe it was Austria. And let me get around here so you can see the acceptance marks on this. I'm going to zoom in. And there's the Austrian Eagle. Acceptance date of um, 1916. And then these are the Austrian proofs on the side. It's, um, there's a straight pull rifle, obviously. It has a straight pull bolt. And on the um, butt plate is a unit marking. LR33. This one, I've had a couple of these long rifles. I kept both the ones I had were Steyr. This was my first one. I do have bayonet, but you know what? You can't shoot a bayonet. They use an in block clip. The uh, ammunition can be made using a case from the uh, 762 by 54 or the Mosin de case. This one's got a little bit of a dimple in it. Doesn't hurt anything. And it's burn marks from annealing the brass. Because you're going to neck up to 8 millimeter. So you're going from 311 thousandths to 330, 331 thousandths. This is a um, three hundred and thirty grain uh, diameter bullet. It's a two hundred and five grain. It's a Spitzer bullet. I'm using IMR thirty thirty one at forty four grains. Now this is the eight by fifty caliber, not the eight by fifty six. I started by collecting the 8x56s and I just didn't like them. I went back to the 8x50s. Now these do take an in-block clip. And I want to show you something if I can get a good picture here. Germany captured Austria or invaded or what have you well before World War II. And you can see the markings on the in-block clip are the Germany Nazi marks. There are several different manufacturers of the M95. And when Germany took over uh, the German ammunition, and the in-block clips or were all during the occupation. The, the bullets on the back would have the Nazi mark, and uh, the in block clips were Nazi mark. I just thought you'd like to have that little bit of information. Now, if you're not familiar with this rifle, I'll show you how this works. Oh, crap. I gotta fix my chronograph. tipped forward for some reason. All right. Then my microphone come loose. There we go. Technicalities. So, these envelopes only go in one way. And again, it's a rimmed cartridge. 
and these bullets are on an angle in this in block clip and that helps to keep from getting rim lock. It's a five round in block clip and it goes down in until it clicks on the catch down there and then you just pull push straight forward and there's a cam system that allows the bolt to rotate and locks in for the shot. Now I'm shooting the target on the right. As I recall, this is a pretty hot load. And you're at 2340 feet per second. I just tried to bring the bolt out. It comes straight back. And then you can slam in the next round. Now, what I use for load data for this is the 8x56 load data, and I'll tell you why. Because when they converted these to 8x56, all they did was rechamber them. That's all they did. The same bolt, same gun, same receiver. So I use 8x56 load data and it works just fine. These guns can really handle some punishment. Twenty-three forty-six, and it really throws your brass off if you're not ready to catch it. And I don't want to lose my brass because these are fire formed for this rifle. Absolutely no pressure signs at all. Um, I do have a carbine version, and I did have some headspace issues, which isn't uncommon. And what I did was I bought an extra bolt, an extra complete bolt, and I kept it for parts, and I changed the bolt head on my carbine, and that worked. I didn't have a headspace problem. Trigger on this is heavy. That says 2345. I'm not sure we're actually. Yeah, it's reading. Twenty four thirty nine. The bolts on these are crude compared to the Swiss. Compared to the Swiss rifle, these bolts are can be difficult. They they're any they're anywhere from really smooth cycling to uh, very difficult. And then the last round, the end block clip drops out, and you're ready for your next clip. And we have a misfire. So we want to wait a minute. Make sure nothing blows up. Okay. And it looks like we have a squib. The primer ignited, evidently. And the uh, bullet is in the chamber. That's not uncommon. So I'm going to have to pause this and fix it. Well, I got it out. Any of you that follow me know it's not something that doesn't happen. Occasionally I'll get a primary ignition and then powder doesn't ignite. And you get a partial squib, and I just take a piece of uh, brass rod and drop it down in the barrel, and it'll knock it out because the bullet doesn't go very far. So we're walking down, see where those five shots hit. Okay, I'm aiming here. 
And you got a two, three, four. There's got to be a five. No, you know, the fifth one didn't shoot. So you got three nice ones right there, and then one up there. And my aim point's right here. So if I wanted to drift my front side, I could, but I'm not going to. We know where it's hitting. Something I forgot to tell you, I, uh, I built that up with JB Weld. It doesn't damage the front sight at all. It just tap it and it'll knock right off and you're back to the original sight without any damage whatsoever. I went ahead and drifted that front a little bit for winding. It's not really staked in there very tight, so it doesn't take much to move it, which is probably what happened. And uh, so I tapped it a little bit. So we're shooting right, so if you're drifting for windage, you want to move your front sight to the right, which will bring your muzzle to the left. And since there's no micrometer adjustment, it's just a guess. And I start again. Wow, that trigger is heavy. That's 2293, and the one before that was, what was it? 2295. 2316. I did discover that the throats are really generous on these rifles and you really don't have to trim the brass down to uh, 50 millimeters. You can leave it at 5.4 and, and it works on my straight poles. 23.59. Some that I did trim and I shoot them but discovered that don't actually have to do that all right I got a duplicate that's 2359 I want to look and see if I actually moved it at all or where we're at here. Yeah, that moved it a little bit. Sure did. So if I tap it just a tad more, it'll probably be right on. I should probably stake this, but I'm not going to. Try it right there. Because this, this load, I'm not ever going to change this load. And I don't know. I shot cast as well. Because these bullets can be hard to find at times. If I see them online, like sometimes somebody will sell them on gun broker, I'll buy them. Just because they can be hard to find. Twenty-three fifty-four. 
This is a hard hitting rifle. Made by 56. If you're shooting that old turkey surplus stuff in the carbine, it's literally painful to shoot. The 8x50. I don't know what it is. I, I get better results and better groups with the 8x50 than I ever did with the 8x56. I just got rid of my 8x56s. And I shot the sunscreen off the top of the chronograph again. Twenty two thirty five magazine drop. Twenty-two forty-one. The um, 7.62 by 5.4 cases, they work really well. Now, if you want a real experience, you can get a hold of some old surplus ammo. You know, the, uh, and you have an 8x56 and you haven't tried that, that's an experience everyone should have at least once. That stuff is painful to shoot. Uh, I've been shooting these heavy calibers for a while now. For me, 8mm is a heavy caliber. And I'm used to the recoil. In the beginning, it took some getting used to. Twenty two forty three. This is really a good load for this gun. You could tweak it a little more. Sometimes for me most of the time for me this is just good therapy. And when it kicks really hard it I don't know, it's just something about it. It just This gets my blood going. And it's really heart pumping. My wife is doesn't really understand it. And that's okay. She allows me the pleasure of doing this. Now I will anneal all this brass before I load again. And ceasefire is coming up. Go down range and take a look. Yeah, I guess I adjusted a little too far. But that's how it goes when you're just tapping that front sight. Just baby steps. All right, so we went a little bit too much. So... We'll do that. And I will bring my point of aim up right on the bullseye. Now the gun is hot. I mean hot, the barrel is hot. Okay, point aim. I'll be right on the bullseye.
หัวนิ่งเฮ้ยดังตู้เฉยElbow's getting sore. I should put my pad on. Got it out. Put it on. Rubbing on that bench, it can get painful. All right. Point of hand, put on the full side. They're all staying in place. <laughs> They're still just a little bit to the left. Just a little bit. Temperatures out here are supposed to get up around 90 today. I like the new microphone I'm using. I'm missing one somewhere. Where'd it go, folks? Fly out there somewhere.
I did some research on this rifle years back. And there are actually pictures of these rifles with uh, scopes on them used by the uh, military in the trench. This is a relatively accurate rifle in the right hand. I've had this gun so hot that the handguard would sweat. All right. Let's take a look. You can see lots of really nice groups down there. As far as what's what, I don't know. But I brought the operation up. I can see my groups are in the uh, first ring just after the bullseye. Nice tight groups. This is a good shooting old gun, and I got a hole in my rest. I got <sighs> seed holes of some kind of seed this is filled with, <sighs> running out all over the place. It'll need to be stitched. Yeah. I'm going to let that cool off. Put some stuff away. I think I'm about done here today. I gotta clean all this stuff. Clean my brass. And eventually reload it all again. I did shoot my SKS today. And I'm lazy. I hate cleaning that thing. I gotta take it completely apart. Clean the gas piston and all that stuff. These old guns are just really easy to clean. I'll take it down there, take a look. Now these were my last few groups of five here. I think that's where I was at on the last shots. Somebody's getting in trouble for breaking the rules. Range officers giving them hell right now. Well, that's it for me today. Y'all have a great weekend.